Hey, my name is Rob Wardell, and today I'm going to be taking you through inside power performance testing. You may have never heard of inside testing, but hopefully you are aware of performance testing for cycling. So these tests are designed to measure your performance, to really check that your training's on track, and also to, to set your training zones. With inside testing, you're basically going to have the opportunity to get a full 360 degree look at your unique physiology. In a two hour test, you're going to be able to find out your VO2 max, your anaerobic threshold, as well as your VLA max. Using these three pillars of performance, you and your coach are going to be able to optimize your training to meet your goals. It's going to basically mean that your training is going to be so much better informed. I'm going to be using a Zwift protocol today, which is going to take me through the whole process to produce the, the best data needed, which I can feed into the inside software. Okay, so I've got the, the bike set up on a trainer. Uh, I've got the Zwift up and running. And uh, yeah, we're gonna get started. So we start off with the warm up. I've got my Wahoo Roam set up and I am recording data from my power crank. So before you do your test, always make sure you calibrate your power source. The tests that we're gonna do, they're all maximal efforts. So we're looking at a 20 second seated sprint. We've got a three minute a six minute and a 10 minute effort. There's a couple of opportunities to work on that seated effort. You get two seven second efforts as part of your warm up. The goal for the gear that you wanna be in the seated sprint, remember you're not allowed to change gear during the sprint. You need to hit peak power within about six to 10 seconds to make sure that the test is valid. So the prompts are coming up on screen to keep you right. Most of the way through my warm up now, the next effort is gonna be the 20 second sprint. Now the purpose of this is to measure VLA max. So you may well have heard of VO2 max, and in cycling, and generally in most sports, the higher that is, the better. Now, what's different with VLA max is higher isn't necessarily better. Higher can still be good. Basically it depends on what are the demands of your event. If you're a road sprinter, downhill mountain biker, a track cyclist, having a high VLA max means that you're gonna be able to deliver explosive power quickly well. If you're a mountain bike marathon rider, long, slow, steady efforts are the kind of efforts you want to be good at, and that is when you want to consider lowering your VLA max. So I'm getting really close to that key moment. So 10 seconds to go. yeah that was maximal effort fingers crossed that one's gonna have worked pretty well i've got 15 minutes now to ride and kind of burn off the lactate so we've had 15 minutes of easy spinning next up is a three minute effort now it's a maximal effort but what you're looking to do here is have a fairly steady power output so i'm gonna try and set off at about 400 watts and see how I can hold that. Yeah, three minute efforts, never get easier. It was that, actually got a really good effort out there. Next up, we've got a six minute effort. It's gonna be another hard one. In your inside report, one thing that's really cool is it'll tell you how much lactate per minute you produce at a given power output. So to do lactate shuttling interval training, it'll tell you the power output to ride at to produce lactate, and then it'll also tell you the power output to ride at to optimally combust lactate. So for your classic over under session, it gives you the optimal power outputs to ride at to get the best results. So anyway, six minute effort up next. not an easy protocol and it will take you to the maximum. So I think that was 375 for six minutes, which again is around about my six minute power curve PBL. So about 20 minutes of spinning, need to get my power up a little bit, burn off that lactate. Now, 
I've been a bike rider for coming on 20 years. I've gone through a lot of testing and the one thing that used to always frustrate me was I never actually got any action points off the back of these tests. Now through using software like Inside, it makes all this information much more valuable to me and it, it really does change the way that I train. Back to business, I've had my 20 minutes of active recovery and I've got my 10 minute maximal effort. The longest effort, yeah, I better go get my focus on and get ready for this effort. There we have it, we're done. Four max efforts. I'm gonna guess that that probably came across on camera that uh, yeah, those really were max efforts. And yeah, basically what I've got to do now is uh, download the file and then I'm gonna run the numbers on inside. Okay, so let's have a little look at the performance test report and all the information that it's generated from inside. The main thing that I'm gonna be looking at here is your metabolic capacity. So that's the, the data that we all really wanna see. So that VO2 max, VLA max, anaerobic threshold, fat max and carb max. We talked about this a lot during the testing. VO2 max as high as possible. VLA max is more uh, tailored to the demands of your event and that fat max and carb max is going to be really useful for setting those pacing strategies and nutrition plans. Following that, we're looking at load characteristics. So this is where you can see how are you creating energy? Is it majority aerobic? Is it majority anaerobic? How much lactate are you accumulating at given power outputs? For a coach, this is so useful for being able to plan interval training sessions, set these uh, pacing, pacing strategies for events from 10 mile time trials to 100 mile time trials or mountain bike marathons. Um, and we also get to see um, this part here with the metabolic demand that shows you how much of your energy is coming aerobically, how much of it is coming anaerobically. Following that, you get your metabolic fingerprint, which basically gives you in a glance, what are your strengths and your weaknesses? What do you need to work on? It's really just a, a quick glance to see, to see where you're at and how you can improve. I think this is probably the, the biggest value here is the training zones. So these training zones are, are your personal training zones. They are very, very accurate. They're lab uh, quality verified values. So this is probably where the real value comes from, from the inside testing, because it lets you know exactly what to work on and how to plan your training. In that as well, we've got a you know, lower upper watt range, a target power, and also a breakdown of the energy that you use to ride at these given um, power outputs. So that's what's included in your test report. Thank you very much for watching if you've made it this far. And uh, if you have any questions or any feedback, you know, leave it in the comments or, or get in touch.